Hello everyone, welcome again. In this video, I'm going to discuss how to read the data from the external file system, transform it and pass it back to the step definition of a Cucumber feature file. In Cucumber, whenever you want to work with the multiple set of test data, an ideal approach is to use the data table. Data table is a good approach when you have a limited number of rows in the table. Now let us assume that there is a data set which contain 100 rows. So in this scenario, it is not a good approach to create a data table inside the feature file that contain 100 rows. One of the solution to this problem is to store the data table outside the feature file that is in the external file system, such as Excel or CSV file and load that data during the runtime. So that is what exactly I'm going to discuss in this video. So first, let me create a Maven project in a Cucumber style. So in the archetype, I will put a filter on the Cucumber keyword. And then I'm going to select this archetype. This is the group ID I'm going to use and the artifact ID is data tables. So this is going to create a Maven project for us in a Cucumber style and it will also add the necessary dependency for the Cucumber framework. So let me open the pom.xml. So as you can see here, the archetype automatically added the dependency for the Cucumber framework. At this moment, our Maven project is using the older version of JDK. Let me change it to use the newer version of JDK that is JDK 11. So for that, I'm going to add these two properties in the pom.xml and make sure that you are adding this property under the properties tag. And also I will remove these two tags. After making these changes, just do a right click on your Maven project. Select Maven and click on update project. So now our project is using JDK 11. For the use case, which I'm going to discuss in this video, I will use the test ng as an underlying framework for running the test. So let me add the dependency for the test ng framework in the pom.xml of this project. So I will go to the Maven repository and search for the test ng dependencies. And I will add the dependency under dependencies tag. So let me go ahead and create a simple feature file that is going to use a data table. Inside this feature file, I'm going to add a scenario. So in this feature file, I have created a scenario. Inside the scenario, there is a step which is going to use the data table. Inside the data table, there are three rows present. The first row represents the header and all the subsequent rows represent the data. So I'm going to create the runner and using the runner, I will generate the step definition for this feature file. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to use the test ng framework for executing the Cucumber test. And that is why I'm going to use the test ng class to create the runner for our feature file. So 
and then I will specify the metadata using the annotation at the rate cucumber options. To generate the step definition, I will set the flag that is dry run to true. And then I will specify the location of the feature file. And then I'm going to run this runner so it will generate this step definition for us. Okay, so this is the step definition which we need to implement. When we created our project using the Cucumber archetype, it automatically created certain files for us and one of the file is the step definition. So I will use this file to provide the implementation of the step definition. So if you look at the parameter that is being passed to this step definition is of type data table. So let me go ahead and print that data table. And now I need to update our runner. So dry run is false. And then I need to specify the location of the step definition file with the help of glue configuration. And let me go ahead and run the runner again. Okay, so as you can see here, this is the data table which is getting printed because of this. So as you can see here in our current scenario, the data table contains limited number of rows and that is why we can directly create the data table inside the feature file itself. But let us assume that you have hundreds of rows just like this and you want to use this data in your feature file. So it is not advisable to create a data table that contain hundreds of rows. So now let us discuss the design of a data table which we are going to use that will tell framework that the data is coming from the Excel file or any other external file system. So I will follow the same pattern but I will just stick to a single row. So the Excel column will represent the name of the Excel file. Then the location represent the absolute path to this Excel file. And remember that we need to pass the location without the double quotes. The sheet column represent that from which sheet we want to read the data. An index column will represent that in this entire table, what is the index we need to use for reading the data. In case if you are not passing the index, our framework will read all the rows from the Excel file. So let me start with that implementation first, keeping the index as optional. So this is how we are going to specify the data table and the data table contains the information of the Excel file from which we want to read the data. To read the Excel file, we are going to use the POI framework. So let me add the dependency of Apache POI framework in our project. Now let us discuss about the design. So first I am going to create an interface. The name of the interface is iDataReader. Inside this interface there are two methods which I am going to add. 
the first one is to read all the rows and the second one is to read the specific row. So the reason why I'm creating an interface because we have different file system. You can either use the Excel file system to read the data. You can use the CSV file or later on you can use other file format for reading the data. So as we have a different implementation, it is not a good idea to have a tight coupling for a specific implementation type. So with this interface, I can provide different implementation and based on the requirement, I can provide what implementation to be used during the runtime. So for example, the basic implementation we can have is for the Excel. Excel data reader. This class is going to implement this interface. So whenever I want to work with the Excel file, I will provide this implementation during the runtime in this step definition. Let's say I want to work with the CSV file. So I can create another implementation for the CSV file. And this class is going to implement the same interface. So again, at the runtime, if I want to use the CSV file for providing the data, I can provide this implementation. So as you can see here, we have decoupled the implementation and based on the file system, we will specify what implementation we should use. And that is why I use the concept of interface. After this, I'm going to create one more class called Excel configuration. And the responsibility of this class is just to provide the configuration which is needed for reading the Excel file. And this Excel configuration will be passed down to our Excel data reader. So at this point, a common question which comes into the mind is that why can't we have the configuration inside the data reader itself? And this is purely the design decision. I want to keep the implementation and configuration into two separate class. But yeah, you can have the Excel configuration inside the same class that is the Excel data reader. Now let me show you what is the data structure which I'm going to use for storing the data. So as you can see here in our Excel file, there are 100 rows and I don't want to put much of effort in reading the data from the Excel file. So what I'm going to do is to store the data in a map. And the map will have the key as the header and value as the column value. So whenever you want to read the data from a specific column, you can get that data by using the header name. So the data structure will be something like this. For every row, I'm going to create a map object. And the key is the header and the value is the column value. So if I take the example of this three rows, so for the first row, the map object will be something like this. First name equal to this. and so on. And similarly for the second row, the map object will be something like this. and so on. So whenever I want to read the data from a specific row, I can just use that particular map object and pass the column header to get the value from the row and then the corresponding column. As you can see here, we have uh, multiple rows in our Excel sheet. So I'm going to store all this map object inside a list. So basically the data structure, which is going to store the entire data from the Excel file will be like this. 
so list of map of string comma string so the list represent that all the rows inside a given excel and uh, one map object for every row which is going to store the data in this manner so this is the overall design which i'm going to use for the implementation and the implementation i'm going to discuss in our next video